Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. We are now at the end of May so it's time to wrap up all the reading I did last month. So in total I think I read nine books and I am someone who counts books that I did not finish or abandoned towards my reading goal if I read over 50% because that's usually around like 150 to 200 pages and I'm going through a phase of like novellas and short stories that are also that length so it makes sense to me like that's a whole book in a sense. Not the book I'm reading but it's a whole book. I think today we're going to start with the stats first. So as usual, my moods were dark, adventurous, emotional, tense, mysterious, full of a bit of hopeful, which I think came from Kay Ancom's Icarus, because I can't think of anything else I read this month that has that vibe. And again, as usual, my biggest genre is YA, which I still believe is not a genre, fantasy, and then LGBT, which again, I believe is not a genre. And then I only had like six genres total this month, so the other three were horror, historical, and romance. And again, I believe the only one that counts as romance is Kay Ancrum's Icarus, because I'm just not a big romance girly. And my average rating for the month ended up being 3.25 stars, not including the one I did not finish, because I do give those reviews, but I don't give them ratings, because that feels fair. And that was a full spectrum from 2 stars up to 4.5 stars. So let's go on to some books. So the first book I read in May was Icarus by Kay Ancrum. Let's show her off a little here. She's beautiful. This is my damaged Waterstones copy that I think... I didn't notice until like halfway through reading that, oh, the cover creaks every time I open it. And then I investigated and I thought, you know what? It adds character. So this is the first book I read in May. I started it on May 1st. I finished it in May 1st. <laughs> because Kay Ancrum, I say this every time I make a video about her, is a once in a lifetime kind of author to me. So I will read everything she's ever written. I am obsessed with her. She is something that's truly so special and me specific that I, I need everything she's ever gonna write. And this is the book I consumed in, pr I say two sittings, it was all in one day, and that's the first time, I think since I was like 16 or younger, that I have read a whole book in a day. So this has just like reignited my love for reading. Not like my love for reading died in any way, but it proved that, oh, I do have an attention span that's not been rotted entirely by the internet. And there are some books that, you know, this proved that this is my ideal kind of book. The next book I read was The Arc of Lamplighter by Crystal J. Bell, and I gave it two stars. This is a book that I picked up on NetGalley because I saw it and I thought, you know, that feels like a very me book. As I say every time, I try to only choose books that I think I'll be obsessed with, so when they fall flat, it's so much more disappointing. I had two main issues with this book, and they were both the selling points in the description. This book has mysterious fog and mysterious ship figureheads. And they were the two aspects that when they became more developed in the plot, I just got more and more confused as time went on. So people disappear into this fog in this historical town, and the lamplighter's job is to light the lamps so that people can find their way home. The mystery fog completely enthralls me, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna love this. Then the fog just didn't feel important at all throughout the book, because you find out that, oh, people are going missing for maybe other reasons? There is a twist to do with the fog that feels like it came completely out of nowhere because the book just didn't lay the groundwork for the twist to be believable. And this little town is also famous for its lucky ship figureheads. Why they're lucky, we don't know. Well, we probably do know. I think I was probably skim reading at that point. There is no, like, <laughs> they have really no relevance in the plot except for a plot twist. Like, we don't find out a huge amount why they're lucky or why people want them for their boats or yeah, any mention of them, except like, oh, there's a plot twist. And then we don't really come back to that plot point at all, in my opinion, in my opinion. So yeah, it's always disappointing when the book's major selling points are the least exciting parts of the book. And then I did three audiobook rereads this month, because I do love rereading my favourite books via audiobook, because I can just so now. Audiobooks are not a great way for me to process new information, some kind of, I don't know, auditory processing disorder. So I love to reread. So I did Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising just because I had them, and they're reasonably short books. I could just sit there and listen to a couple hours and finish them all in three days, I think, maybe four days. I realised that a lot less happens in Siege and Storm than I thought, because the Sea Whip is killed in chapter four, so the rest of the book is just them hanging out, basically. And Ruin and Rising, although it was originally my least favourite book back when I read them however many years ago, um, I think it might be the best one. I think it might be. I have a lot of issues with it, obviously, you know, Alina's powers, Mal's existence, 
but I enjoyed it a lot more than I remembered. And I gave all of those three stars, but I think on Storygraph they might have been like a 3.5 or a 2.5. I don't really remember. It's been, it's been an entire week. And then we move on to my least favourite read of the month, which is Ladybug Meth by Ava Reed. Again, a book I read an advanced copy of in exchange for an honest review. So Lady Macbeth is Avery's reimagining of Shakespeare's most famous villainess, and it claims to give her a voice, a past, and the power that transforms Shakespeare's story. And I will say that I am someone who's had like very hit or miss experiences with Avery's work so far. I've read Study and Drowning, I loved it. It's one of my favourite reads of this year, because I read it this year. And I think last year I tried to read The Wolf and the Woodsman, I think it's called, and I just, I think I gave up at 50%. And then this is an Avery book I didn't like. Juniper and Thorn is something I imagine I will be obsessed with if it ever gets added to my library so I can read it. And I think there's a lot of her upcoming works I think I'm going to be obsessed with. Just Lady that that's just not one of them. And the major downfall with it, in my opinion, is that the reference to the original Lady Macbeth in Shakespeare's Macbeth are non-existent. And I was expecting a more accurate retelling as this was marketed as a retelling, but it's more just like a very loose reimagining of like, here, here's a woman called Macbeth. There are three witches in the vicinity and it's set in Scotland. And like the biggest disappointment is there is no out damn spotline because maybe spoiler lady macbeth does not regret the murder she doesn't really even do the murder and yeah i'm gonna have a whole detailed review of my issues with this book next we go into an advanced copy that i did not finish this was all the devils by caitlin wilson which i think i gave up at 64 percent and again it's a book that i thought i was going to love and be obsessed with and i just didn't this book's also weird to me because in the the goodreads description i'm assuming the publisher did it I'm pretty sure it's a tra traditionally published book, but there's a, a reader's review section rather than like an actual review section, and it all just looks like TikTok comments. And it's like, wow, I love an all, an all lowercase official review. That is basically just a keyboard slam. It's beautiful. So again, a book I thought I loved, and then I got to 64% through, and I realised that, you know, I'm skim reading this, and I should have been able to get into a book before halfway through. I think it was mostly because the prose was very over the top in places and the protagonist was very one dimensional. Like even at 64% I knew equally amount as I did about her as I did at 0% and that is nothing except she loves her sister. I think the actual thing that was my breaking point is that her and this other character who I think is probably going to be the love interest at some point just keep having these conversations because he knows what's going on in this mystery plot and she doesn't. So she asks him a question, he answers it with another question. She asks a question, and then he's just like, oh, I'll explain later, don't worry about it, I'll explain later. And it's just that. Multiple times a chapter, multiple chapters in a row. And I was just like, you know, I'm not learning anything. We're just going to these locations and not explaining what's going on, and I just can't. I'm not the protagonist, I can't deal with this not knowing. So yeah, that's my DNF of the month. There's two other books on here that you might be able to see, there's like lines there that I didn't technically DNF. I got Never a Hero, which is a sequel to Only a Monster, out of the library, and I thought, you know, I'm going to read this via ebook, and I just didn't. Because I liked the first book, and I'm trying to work out if I liked it enough to have the investment to actually read the sequel. <laughs> Basically. And then I took the Emily Wilde, is it the Encyclopedia of Fairies, is that the first one, out of the library? I read maybe like two chapters, and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not in the headspace for this kind of prose right now, because it's very... The voice is very historical and informative and educational, and I like I like that, just not right now. And then my final read of the month was All the Dead Lie Down by Kyrie McCauley, and I loved this. This is a book that I'm surprised I haven't already read, because it's a very me book, especially if you look at the cover, you think like, huh, that's a book that should exist on me shelves. Wherever, as I'm going through like a vague horror influence era now with T. Kingfisher, and I'm like the number one House of Salt and Sorrow stand, which this book is promoted as for fans of. So it makes sense that I love this book. I literally finished it, reading it yesterday. It's a book that I, I... the line on here spans like three weeks. So I read the first 5% and then I picked up... I think I picked up All the Devils and I thought, okay, I gotta prioritise the arc. And then I just never got back to reading All the Dead Lie Down. And it's a book I love. It's spooky, it's sapphic, it has weird little girls, it has secrets that are that the groundwork is laid out for these plot twists to happen and it's believable and the secrets aren't just like kept forever we find that like they communicate on occasion it's fun 
And it's too early for me to actually form an like a coherent opinion on this book. I gave it four stars and I liked it. It's not my favourite of the month because... Where's it gone? Because Icarus is my favourite book of the month and my favourite book of the year. One of my favourite books of the year. So yeah, all I did lie down is no Icarus, but I did love it. And do I have any more stats to share? So this was nine books, even though one of them is technically a DNF. I think I read like 33 hours of audiobook in general because the Grisha First trilogy, they're all about like 10, 11 hours long. And I think I ended up reading like 1,800-ish pages. That's fun. So in June, we're going into Pride Month and I would say like, yeah, we're going to read exclusively queer books for Pride Month. But I think, as you can tell, that LGBT is in my top genres every single month. Like, that's just my life now. So I think my actual plan for reading next month is to finish reading trilogies, because... <laughs> I ha Or just my series in general, because I have a lot of books. So. So. I reread the Cruel Prince trilogy over audiobooks, and now I'm ready to read the Oak book. It's hidden behind this postcard somewhere. Is it called The Stolen Throne? The Stolen Throne. The Stolen Heir. The Stolen Heir is what it's called. So I'm ready to read that one this month now that I'm refreshed on the trilogy. I've been reading the Once Upon a Time, the first two I again over audiobook. So then I can read A Curse of True Love. And I'm gonna read A House of Star of Sorrows via audiobook. So then I can read A House of Roots and Ruin, where it is on my shelves, probably down here somewhere. So yeah, I think we're gonna be making progress on my physical TBR in June now that I'm like up to date via audiobook and can read these books without just wondering what's going on. So yeah, that's that's all I have to say for this month. I think overall this is like ranked as my third, my worst reading month. I think it got a 3.2 star total, when usually I'm in like the 3.3 to the 3.6 star range. But I found a new favourite and that's good enough for me. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!